What I'd really like for you to get out of the talk today, um, for those of you that may not be too familiar with the data management role, just exactly what we do in data management, what's our primary goal, uh, and also I continually am going to stress the importance of a good close relationship between the data managers and the statistical group on any given project. And then as I mentioned, uh, the bulk of my presentation uh, is going to get into uh, looking at some of those challenges that, I'm, uh, that I've encountered with the early phase solid tumor oncology trials. I'm currently working on a phase one and a phase two uh, trial at Cytel. And so I'm going to discuss the challenges along with the solutions uh, that we've utilized and the value added. And uh, at the end, I can open it up for any further discussion, any questions uh, that you may have for me. And so our primary goal is to produce a clean, reproducible data set that's fit for analysis. And what goes hand in hand with that is what are the issues that could result in the data not being fit for analysis? So you want to identify those as early as possible. Uh, again, this is where that close relationship between the data managers and the statisticians comes in. Uh, we often think of data managers working with statisticians just around um, the interim analysis or database lock when the stats group may provide us with outliers in the data. But I also want to stress the importance uh, of that relationship right from the start. Once the protocol is finalized uh, and you're working on the CRF and the ADC build, that's, that's really uh, where that relationship can become very important as well. Uh, and so as a data manager, once we have, once we know uh, which EDC platform we're going to use, we'll start the process of the build. And so this example is just uh, using uh, one of the fields. So we're, we're going to be capturing data birth as a variable uh, for all patients across the trial. We're going to program that into our form in the EDC system. So here we have our demographics form. It's at this stage as well. We'll, we'll start thinking about our automatic edit checks. So those are going to be our validations directly within the system. So for date of birth, you know, pretty straightforward. We'd use a date range to make sure that the date entered indicates the patient's at least 18 years, years or older. So if they entered in today's date by mistake, you know, it flags them right at the time of entry. And I'm going to discuss in regards to oncology, in particular, balancing the automatic edit checks and your manual checks as well. So once we program the form, we'll program that into a visit. So here we have our screening visit with the informed consent, eligibility, uh, vital signs, et cetera. And then we'll program our set of visits. And so this example just shows visits through the first cycle. Uh, once, we would, once we've programmed all of our visits, that's going to be our visit grid. And it's going to look a lot like the schedule of assessment, schedule of events uh, within the finalized protocol. And that's where the first challenge comes in with oncology trials, where it naturally takes a longer time to reach the clinical endpoints which results in a lot of data for some of these patients. Uh, so for each of my studies, uh, the patients can continue on through the study, uh, study treatment cycles until development of disease progression, which I'll discuss more in depth, uh, dose limiting toxicity, or withdrawal criteria. So this is an example of a patient that's progressed through seven cycles. Each of those X's uh, represents a uh, expected page at each of those visits. So as you can see just from this screenshot, is a lot of data coming in uh, for these patients. And inherently, when there's this much data being captured, uh, it makes it harder for the sites to stay up to date on their data entry, and that makes it harder for the data managers in their cleaning efforts as well. And so along with the length is the variability of how long each of these patients is going to be in the trial. Um, this obviously has strong budget and programming implications. Uh, you know, budget's pretty straightforward. A sponsor wants to have a good idea of how much their trial is going to cost from the start, whether they're paying uh, monthly, quarterly, or per data points. Uh, that obviously adds the variability, adds a major challenge there. And then that creates a programming uh, challenge as well, as we need to make sure we program out enough cycles within the EDC system, and we don't want to duplicate our efforts across each of those cycles as well. And so the solution, first and foremost, is just having that experienced team of data management and statisticians reviewing the protocol, reviewing the EDC flow uh, to make sure that you're capturing all of your critical variables that are going to allow the endpoints to be effectively analyzed. Uh, for data managers, one of the first things we do is confirm that there's no duplicate data points across CRFs, across visits. You know, the last thing we want um, is data being captured in two places. It just opens the door for inconsistencies to be entered and requires further follow-up. Uh, the data manager is also going to ensure that the the flow of the system is nice with the eCRFs. Uh, the easier we can make it on the sites, the higher quality of data we're going to receive. 
uh, we're also going to receive it in more timely fashion. This is particularly important on these early phase oncology trials as there's um, you know, a high level of uh, discontinuation and also adverse events. We want to be getting that data into the system as, as soon as possible. Uh, and then, again, I'm going to mention it uh, further later, but just the consistent data cleaning both through the automatic and the manual checks. And so the value added by all of this is at the time of an analysis, whether it's the interim or the final analysis, we don't need that um, extra extended period of time for cleaning because we've been doing it all along. And so the next several slides, if you're familiar with uh, solid tumor oncology, it's going to be just a basic recap, uh, but I just wanted to go through it. Uh, as this is one of the most unique aspects to working with oncology trials compared to other therapeutic areas for a data manager. Uh, and so uh, the use of tumor regression as an endpoint um, in phase two trials that are assessing a new agent for uh, evidence of tumor effect has been uh, backed by years of evidence. And so those, uh, those endpoints that are associated with the tumor regression are only going to be useful if they're based on widely accepted standards, and that's where RESYST comes in, which is Response Evaluation Criteria in Solid Tumors. Uh, RESYST 1.0 was established in the year 2000 for this exact reason, uh, to, uh, in order to provide that consistency both at the site level, across sites, and limiting any site bias uh, is, you know, the main, the main reason for these guidelines. In 2008, they came out with RESYST 1.1, the newer version, uh, both of which uh, are really the foundation uh, for oncology trials assessing solid tumors, providing those baseline uh, instructions. And so at baseline, the tumor lesions are going to be categorized into measurable and non-measurable, and target and non-target. And the target lesions must be accurately measured um, in at least one dimension, so the longest diameter um, in the plane of measurement. And so uh, where the major change came in between 1.0 and 1.1 is that in 1.0, uh, the sites were to de determine a maximum of 10 target lesions with a maximum of 5 per organ. In 1.1, 1 .1, uh, they'll, they'll identify a maximum of 5 target lesions uh, with 2 per organ. So that was one of the major changes. Uh, and that was backed through years of analysis they did on what would be the most effective uh, moving forward. And then the other, one of the other major changes is that they included instructions on nodal lymph nodes, uh, nodal lesions, uh, measuring the short axis. Uh, so there was a number of uh, different changes that are all highlighted in a chart in 1.1, but those are two of the more major. And then so this last note I have on the slide, uh, right from Rhesus 1.1, is that in the context of phase two uh, studies where the beneficial effect of therapy is not known, follow-up assessments every six to eight weeks uh, coinciding with the end of a cycle is reasonable. And so for both of my studies, uh, our cycles are four weeks, so they'll assess at baseline within 28 days of the start of study treatment. And then every two cycles, so every eight weeks, they're going to do their tumor assessment follow-up. So that's kind of what I'm going to get into. It's uh, not, I haven't seen it specifically hardwired. Um, it's more that we have, so, so these next two slides show our CRFs of where they're capturing. So they'll enter in, uh, here's the target lesion, the CT scan. They'll enter in the site, the date, the method of assessment, and the size. Um, and they can enter up to five, uh, you know, per recess. But then we utilize, so this page is going to be entered at baseline, and then it's going to be entered again at follow-up. And we don't have, it's not going to pre-populate what they entered at baseline. They're going to enter it again, but then we utilize the automatic edit checks to ensure consistency, and then we utilize manual checks as well. So it's kind of, that's what I'm going to get into with the challenge of determining the balance between your checks. So the non-target, again, very similar form setup. The difference is going to be that uh, rather than the measurement you have, whether it's present, absent, or unequivocal progression. And then, uh, you know, this is the chart from Rhesus uh, that's going to determine your disease response. So uh, it seems like everyone has pretty good familiar, uh, familiarity with this. But uh, if you have your complete response or partial response, it means that the uh, the tumors are, are shrinking. If it's stable, they've stayed relatively the same size. And if you have your progressive disease, that means that it's increased, uh, the lesions increased by 20%. And then similar for non-target, uh, if there's a complete response, the non-target lesions have disappeared. If it's progressive disease, it means that there's been an identification of new lesions or the unequivocal progressions occurred. And then once you've 
analyzed your disease response for target and non-target, that's how you would determine your uh, overall response. And you will capture the best overall response across the follow-up tumor assessments. And so again, the, ch the challenge here, as I mentioned, is, is validating this lesion measurement, calculating the overall response, and just establishing that clear process of how you're going to reconcile this data. Uh, so first and foremost, again, you need to have a solid um, knowledge of rhesus guidelines, both for the CDM and the stats group. I also want to stress you want your clinical operations to make sure that the sites have a strong background in rhesus, uh, as they're the ones actually collecting and entering the data. And then uh, here's where it comes in, where we're going to utilize um, as, as many edit checks directly within the system uh, as is reasonable. And so uh, anytime you can utilize an automatic edit check where the site can be prompted right as they're entering is fully ideal because if they're being prompted uh, two weeks down the road, you're much less likely to get a high quality response because they're not right in there with the data in their mind and the source documents open. And so we do utilize um, in uh, my two studies the uh, auto calculation of the sum of lesions. Uh, so that just makes it facilitates higher quality of data from the site side. Uh, on both of my studies, we uh, do use this EDC um, and we do have some manual checks along with mostly automatic checks. But uh, no matter what you're doing, uh, you, you want to have all of those checks uh, uh, documented in a document. So data validation specification is what we utilize. Um, and our stats group reviews that along with the sponsor signs off on that as well. Uh, and then the last challenge I have here is where um, that I, I have seen it where the site investigator disagrees, essentially, that uh, the the overall the disease response for uh, target or non-target lesions w was what rhesus would say it was. So technically, it um, you know it did meet the criteria for progressive disease, but they you know say that they think it's stable based on their uh, interpretation. And I I personally I would I would like to hear other people's thoughts on this of how to best deal with it. But um, what you know what we really utilize is just cl clear documentation that a conversation was held with the site. Um, and you want to have, you know, the value added you want to have at the end that there's no unanswered questions uh, with, with the data. But has anyone seen where an investigator disagrees? And, and how have you seen it dealt with? Uh, so the next challenge comes in with uh, coding. So I was going to read a quote just from uh, I didn't bring my sheet up here. Oh, I don't need the quote. <laughs> but uh, in regards to coding, you want to ensure that uh, all of the data is, is as consistent as possible for uh, the statisticians at the end. And the way that we maintain this consistency uh, is through a medical dictionary. So uh, right from the start, you decide uh, what is going to be coded, medical history, adverse events, con medications, exactly what's going to be uh, coded uh, using the dictionaries. We at Cytel have a coding team. So what I would do is I actually, on agreed upon intervals, usually monthly, excuse me, I would um, uh, provide an extract of that data to the team. And then they would actually conduct the coding uh, on that. And so where the challenge comes in with oncology trials uh, is that the chemotherapy treatments are often composed of various drug combinations. So uh, we have this. Uh, added challenge where there's not abundant number of these combinations within the World Health Organization drug dictionary. So uh, the solution is that Whodrug is willing to uh, include new terms on request, but it means that you have to up version before the study locks. And so you just want to be aware of this and have this plan in place right from the start in your data management plan. And so again, the, the value added is pretty much the value added by coding, but that you minimize inconsistency um, and just limit my overall goal is to limit any complications for the statisticians at the end. Um, and so the last challenge deals with adverse event collection. So there's really two challenges here. Uh, one is pretty tricky, where the protocols often state uh, that disease progression uh, should not be an event or death, that these are outcomes rather than adverse event terms. And so uh, I have seen sites enter, enter a disease progression adverse event. and. Uh, once a site has entered data into the database and they have it in their source, they're, they're hesitant to remove any data. Uh, so you just uh, 
again, no perfect solution. You need, you need proper documentation. Um, we are looking at the data in real time, so we're going to be able to follow up with the site right away. Um, and so that, that certainly um, is, a, is a pro, but you do uh, just have to document what the decision was. And then uh, the second is with this patient population, we obviously have a large amount of adverse events and serious adverse events. Uh, in regards to serious adverse events, this uh, data is, uh, the safety data is stored in a safety database as well as in the clinical trial data. So that's where the SAE reconciliation comes in. And so when you have a large amount, um, automated SAE reconciliation listings are obviously um, a wise idea. Uh, you know, we utilize uh, SAS for, for some of our SAE reconciliations, and then also perhaps increasing the frequency um, of those reconciliations. So on other trials, you may only have to do it uh, monthly. You may want to think about doing it every two weeks if you have a lot of serious adverse events coming in. Uh, and then, again, value is just that this essential safety data is uh, collected as expected based on the protocol. And so lastly, uh, the general goal of this uh, presentation was just to, you know, push that close relationship between the data managers and statisticians. Uh, you want to identify any of these challenges, any of these issues as early on, especially when you're working with uh, oncology trials where you have kind of a unique set of challenges. And then just overall steady review of the data and any documentation throughout um, is vital.